The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. From the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept testimony from a human being, but I say this so that you may be saved. John was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's, the works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Please all be seated for the homily. Today, we begin the time-honored Filipino Catholic tradition, the Novena Masses. And for those who prefer to have these Masses celebrated in the evening, it is referred to as Simbang Gabi. And for us who want these Masses celebrated in the early morning, we call it Misa de Galio. And most of us, in attending Simbang Gabi, we wish for something special to happen in our life. Many of us have something in our heart, a prayer, a petition, a desire, an aspiration that we want to bring to God on this festive novena. After all, for most of us Catholics, every novena, has something to do with the request for God's intervention in our daily concerns and problems. Some of us might be praying for healing, healing of physical sickness or emotional wounds. Others among us might be praying for help in finances, relationship, restoration of relationship, job opportunities, reassignment, designation, or promotion. But whatever it is we are praying for, we know that God is here. He is listening to us. And He is taking us seriously by loving us so much that He gave us His Son. And this Misa de Gallio, we start our countdown to the birth of our Lord. And we do this through the Eucharist that assures us of God's presence, that assures us that He is here with us whenever we gather and pray. The Jewish people, as pointed out by Jesus in today's Gospel, could not control the longing of their hearts that they turned to John the Baptist to get a glimpse of where the Messiah is to be found. And faithful to his mission, John the Baptist testified to the truth about Christ. He became a burning and shining lamp for the Jewish people to recognize and encounter Jesus. And Jesus said, for a while, these people were content to rejoice in John's light. It was very clear to John, however, that he was just preparing for the coming of the Lord. He prophesied that someone, the, the promised one, would indeed be coming after him. And just as John the Baptist became the burning and shining lamp for the Jewish people to encounter Jesus, we too are called to keep our burning, to keep our light burning and shining for other people. 
that as a pilgrim church, we are called to be synodal. We are called to be a church that journeys together with no one is left out, with no one is left alone, with no one is left behind. And just as the Eucharist brings us closer to one another, so we are urged to journey or to walk with the least, the lost, and the last people in our community that we must reach out those people who are overwhelmed and carried away by the burdens and heavy loads of life. And whenever we do good to people, whenever we do favor to them, whenever we faithfully fulfill our duties and responsibilities as public servants, whenever our soldiers risk their lives to defend and protect our people, we too become a burning and shining lamp for other people. And we need to keep our lamp burning and shining, especially in this time when our world is filled with darkness. Because of COVID-19 pandemic, I could say that some of the people have lost hope. And we could see this in the rising number of suicide cases. Recently, we were shocked by the news of political figures, people who belong to a prominent family who allegedly committed suicide. And I myself have noticed that one of the common sins confessed by our penitents recently is the sin of, is the thought of committing suicide. But you know, when we were having our something like subject matter experts exchange with our U.S. counterparts in Western Mindanao Command way back 2008, some of us Filipino chaplains then assigned in Mindanao were arguing and debating with a U.S. chaplain who presented and who insisted that we should adopt in Toto her suicide pre prevention program that she designed for the U.S. troops because we reasoned out that we found her program inapplicable or irrelevant to our Filipino soldiers. And to convince us, he began to tell us about how those U.S. personnel who were involved in rescue and retrieval operation when Hurricane Katrina hit heavily the states of Louisiana and New Orleans in 2005, and how many of those personnel committed suicide after the operation, weeks after the operation. But knowing the resiliency of the Filipino people, thinking about how resilient the Filipino people are, we unanimously said that that will never happen to our Filipino soldiers. Dahil alam naman natin na tayo mga Pilipino, kahit nasa lantan ng bagyo, pag nahagip ng kamera, pag naharap sa kamera, ngumingiti pa rin. Kahit yung mga naglilibing ng kanila mga mahal sa buhay, pag sinasabi ng kameraman na smile, umi-smile pa rin. But now, we accept that things have changed. In fact, the only command guidance that your army chaplains receive from our commanding general Philippine Army when we paid courtesy call to him during our anniversary last month was to make a program or intervention for these suicide cases. 
And the letter S of the word serve, battle cry of our commanding general Philippine army also focuses on the most important resource of the Philippine army, our soldiers, to ensure the physical as well as the mental health and well-being of our soldiers. And brothers and sisters, today's gospel gives us the basic way to address this concern, this problem. And that is, we have to imitate John. We need to keep our light, to keep our lamp burning and shining. That we must also be a source of light and hope for other people. But especially for those people whom God entrusted to our care and stewardship. Members of our family, your spouse, your children, your parents, your sibling. And let us be synodal. Let us journey together with no one is left alone. No one is left behind. No one is left out. And in this Mesa de Gallio, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the Messiah whose coming brought God's presence in our life. And like that of the Jews, may our hearts be also beating fast for the many desires that need fulfillment, for the many petitions and requests that need answers, and while anticipating for what God has prepared for us. And we know that in Jesus, our prayers, our petitions, our desires, our aspirations will find its ultimate response because Jesus himself is God's answer to the prayer of his people. And let this Simbang, this Simbang Gabi or Misa de Gallio that we begin today be really an event of discovery of Jesus and not a mere inquiry about him. Let it be truly faithful and prayerful. And may our heart's desires merit the bountiful blessing that Christ's coming affects in the lives of God's people. We hope and we pray.